This is the second part of the video for measuring uh, the distance to a star using Cepheid variables. And we're going to concentrate on the work of Henrietta Leavitt. Uh, so you need to watch the other video first. So Henrietta Leavitt was observing uh, variable stars. <coughs> now variable stars are ones whose brightness uh, changes uh, over time. And they have a characteristic uh, pattern of brightening and dimming, brightening and dimming, brightening and dimming like that. Uh, so this is the luminosity of the star and this is time. So this might be a period of days for example. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So she was measuring the uh, period of brightening and dimming. Now the period of brightening and dimming is just like with any wave, it's the time taken to go well through one complete cycle. So if that's on day two and back to there on day roughly five and a half, uh, then that's approximately 3.5 days period. And you may be asked to calculate the period of oscillation of a, of a variable star in your exam. Um, so uh, what... Uh, Henrietta Leavitt noticed was that there was a relationship between how long it took the stars to brighten and dim, so their period of uh, brightening and dimming versus their luminosity. And what she did, began to do was to catalogue the stars, which she knew all the same distance away, and produced a very famous piece of data. So each one of these will be one of her data points. And what she discovered was that the period of luminosity in days was directly proportional, or seemed to be, sorry, not directly proportional, was related to the luminosity. Now this scale is not linear, uh, it's a logarithmic scale, that's why it's not a proportional graph. <coughs> what this what this piece of data meant essentially was that if you could find <coughs> a Cepheid variable star and measure its period of brightening and dimming, and let's say it was five days, you could then go up to the graph and then read across from the graph to find the luminosity of the star. Now this is incredibly important because what it means is, that going back to our original idea, that the luminosity the observed brightness and the distance are linked. If you can find the luminosity of the star and then you measure the observed brightness from Earth, you can then calculate the distance away. So the Cepheid variable method uses a Cepheid variable star, uh, which you then uh, <coughs> measure the period of brightening and dimming, which is something you can do fairly easily from Earth. Plot yourself the graph of brightening and dimming for that star work out its period, then go to the graph, that one's 3.5, go to the graph, and then that tells you the luminosity. So what, Se what Henrietta Leavitt started to do was to then catalogue the distance to all the different galaxies uh, that she could in the universe. She would find a galaxy, so a galaxy, remember, is a collection of stars all orbiting around a central point. She would find within that galaxy a Cepheid variable star. So she finds her Cepheid variable. She measures the period of oscillation, T. Then she uses this graph to find the luminosity. And then the final step is you compare the luminosity, L, to the observed brightness on Earth. So this is the method in itself. Find a Cepheid variable in a galaxy. Measure the periodic time. Use this graph to compare the period to the luminosity. Then compare the luminosity to the observed brightness measured on Earth. You then assume that all stars in that galaxy are the same distance away as the Cepheid variable star.